Uh, greetings, brothers and sisters, and God bless you. I'm doing this message uh, because I've been receiving a lot of emails, and you know, forgive me if I don't reply right away. Um, I do get a lot of emails, and you know, between working full time and I'm doing all this, you know, the the ministry work on my own. Um, so just bear with me; I will get back to you. Um, just sometimes, you know, it just takes a little bit of time. Um, I'm doing this. I, I got an email yesterday from a sister in Christ telling me about. You know, she's discouraged um, because, you know, she's she's talking about the Lord's return to, you know, family and friends and, and those around her, and she's not getting a good response. Uh, even her own family members, her own son is, you know, coming against her and, you know, saying all sorts of nasty things um, because of this. And immediately when I read this email, I, I felt led in the spirit to come on and do this video. And uh, everybody, if you can, go to the book of Second Peter. 3, 3 to 7. Knowing this first, that there shall come in the last days scoffers, walking after their own lusts, and saying, Where is the promise of his coming? For since the fathers fell asleep, all things continue as they were from the beginning of the creation. <clears throat> For this they willingly are ignorant of, that by the word of God the heavens were of old, and the earth standing out of the water and in the water... Whereby the world that then was being overflowed with water perished, but the heavens and the earth, which are now by the same word, are kept in store, reserved unto fire against the day of judgment and perdition of ungodly men. So, again, it says right there, in the last days people are going to be saved. They're walking after their own lust. They're scoffing. They're saying, where is the promise of his coming? You see, what we need to be doing right now is planting the seeds. One of the signs right here, in the last days, they are going to be saying, where is the promise of his coming? Generations have been saying the Lord's coming back and he hasn't come yet. The thing is, the Bible tells us, God's breathing, living word tells us exactly what to look for to signal that the day is at hand. And we're seeing those things now. Even those that claim to be Christians, that claim to be born again, if you bring up the Lord's return to them, saying the Lord's coming soon, you know, they're going to give you that look and say, you know, we're good. You know, God's kingdom's coming to earth eventually, but you know what? We're living in a good old time right now. It's not what the Bible says. The Bible says in Luke 21, 28, when these things begin to come to pass, then lift up your heads for your redemption draweth nigh. And those things are in front of us now. So you have to understand the scriptures, Old Testament and New Testament, and you have to believe that it's truly God's word. If you don't believe it's God's word, then of course you're going to be saying, where is the promise of his coming? I wanted to encourage those of you out there that are feeling beat up. Because trust me, we all have family members that don't believe that the Lord is coming soon. And when you bring up the Lord's return, they're going to give you that look like you're crazy. But that's just Bible prophecy playing out right there. People are walking after their own lusts and saying, where is the promise of his coming? For since the fathers fell asleep, all things continue as they were from the beginning of the creation. <clears throat> so if you're someone that's that's feeling beat up, again, go read through this. 2 Peter 3, 3-7. to It tells you basically what we're seeing right now. That's what people are saying. Where is the promise of his coming? <laughs> so I wanted to encourage you to keep planting the seeds. Keep preaching the truth. The only truth, which is Jesus Christ and him alone. No other mediator. There's only one mediator between God and men, and that is Jesus Christ. So keep planting those seeds. Because even after the rapture of the church, millions are going to come to Christ. Think about it. When millions disappear, when the true born-again believers in Christ Jesus are removed, are snatched away, those that are left here, those that are left behind, they'll remember those words that you were trying to tell them. They'll remember what you said. Because we know, again, that you know one of the greatest revivals in mankind is going to occur after the rapture of the church. Because the rapture itself is an evangelical move. Think about it. Millions disappear. What's the world's response? Well, you know what? There is going to be a strong deception going on, of course, by world leaders. You know Whether it's UFO abduction or whatever else they've got planned to explain it away. 
But then there are going to be those that remember what you told them, what you said. So be encouraged. Jesus said they're going to persecute you. If they persecuted me, they're going to persecute you. So just keep planting the seeds. Love them. You know, don't get in crazy arguments with them. Love them. Plant the seeds. Love them. Love them. But I wanted to come on here and do this because of that email. And again, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm trying to get to as many emails as possible today. Um, forgive me if I don't get back to you right away, but I hope this encourages you. Um, but yeah, again, it's right there in 2 Peter 3.3, 3, knowing this first, that there shall come in the last day scoffers walking after their own lusts and saying, where is the promise of his coming? For since the fathers fell asleep, all things continue as they were from the beginning of the creation. Um, Lord willing, in the next few days, I'm going to be doing another Bible prophecy update, speaking a lot about the current situation with Iran, Syria, Israel, even with North Korea. Um, as things continue to move fast, as we see the day approaching. God bless you.